What's up, guys? Chad, Easy Astro Images channel here. We're going to play with some photons today. So if there was ever a case to demonstrate just how awesome Hyperstar and like a C6 or a C8 can be, I mean, I think this is pretty much it. It's going to show you the good, the bad, the ugly, and the fantastic. We're going to go through just a simple workflow here. This was my Hyperstar c6 that i had now i don't recommend the c6 and hyperstar unless you're willing to deal with some with some shit. just because the c6 quality and everything it's just harder to deal with i made a video about it with the set video i'll put that up here in the screen if you want to hear my whys uh, the eight inch is just so much easier to deal with and you know this is typically what you're going to get you know, some people's images, including mine, look better from day to day, look worse from day to day. The C6 and just kind of trying to work around some of its issues. You can see we've got some uh, bright diffraction rings there and we can see the cabling and all that kind of stuff. And you can see the wonky stars and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, like we can fix all that stuff now. The biggest thing to think about this image and when you see how great this image is, there's 65 images on here, two minute exposures, and it's two hours and 16 minutes worth of data. So it's pretty hard to argue with the results that you're gonna get out of this baby. So this is the original image here. I've kind of went through and all I've done is like a crop, a dynamic background extraction, and then I like to use linear fit to kind of get my RGB colors correct instead of using SPCC. I'm kind of on that sky story hype train where I think that you just end up getting better colors and stars. So the image itself, you know, looks kind of noisy, even for a 533. It must've been hot in the summer. I think it was shot around uh, May or June. But the whole idea is, is that, you know, if you put another hour or two on this target, it's going to clean up nicely and it actually does clean up pretty nice right off the bat. So in this video, we're going to use a couple of SETI's tools, obviously, including we're going to try out the fame script and I'm going to do a separate video on that coming up that just is going to show you how awesome it is, but we'll have a great example of what's great about that script in this video. And if you guys love what we're doing here on the channel, give us a like, Comment, let us know how you like this Hyperstar data, how yours is doing. We also have channel memberships down below. We're up to six channel members now. Hopefully we can maybe hit 10 by the end of the month. Let's try to be positive about everything. 10, it'd be amazing. So I want to do a couple things first. First thing I want to do is I really like these big, bright RGB type of stars right here that we got going on. So I don't want to like shrink the stars to like nothingness, which is kind of like something that a lot of people are doing these days, including myself. You know, we work hard to capture the stars. There's so many different things that you can do to them. So the first thing I did here was just a correct only, which basically is just your basic turn everything off, run the color correct only. Then I'm going to do a fluffy stars, which I'm actually going to lower that a little bit because I don't want my stars actually super small and I want it to bring the halos out a little bit. So we get a little bit more color in there. So this is what we're running on that right now. So this is going to be, we're just working for stars right now, right off the bat. Cause it's with hyperstar data, you got to learn that you got to do this stuff a little bit slower and you got to be a little bit more precise because you're never going to get that perfect exposure on things. You're going to overexpose your stars probably, and you're probably going to overexpose certain pieces of the image. But again, we can fix all this stuff. So we've done all of our correction and everything that we want to do there. Now it's not stretched yet, but I want a really good noise free star plate. So the first thing I want to do to this image is we're going to get rid of a little bit of green. You can use SCNR if you want to. I'm going to use Bill's drag and drop SCNR. And you can see how that kind of got rid of all that green noise, even though we had all of our channel color channels balanced out. And then I like this version of the stars. So what I want to do is I want to open a histogram transformation 
and the screen transfer function, which is the stretch that we have on here. And this is kind of the old school way to do this. We're gonna drag that blue triangle all the way down here and we're gonna drop it. And then we're gonna go up here with this blue triangle, drop it on the image. And that is going, and then that is going to give us the stars that we want. So we can go ahead, close all this stuff out now. So now we have a stretched image and now we're gonna run noise exterminator on this so we can clean up all the noise on our stars. And you know, we're not really worried about the image right now, but now let's just take a look at those hyperstar stars. And you can see, you know, this, this image wasn't like drizzled or nothing like that. So the stars are kinda, you know, they're not the best looking type of things. We can obviously do a lot better, but this is just what we're dealing with right now. This data is old and I'm just kinda showing you to demonstrate everything. So the, what I want to do now is I want to get rid of these. Uh, I want to keep these stars so we can add these back into our other image. So we've got some more beautiful stars to play with. So the image is already stretched. We don't need to unscreen them. So let's just go ahead and extract the stars. And then when that's done, we can go ahead and keep that and get rid of the actual image image. And then we'll go back and work on that. So here is our stars. And at this point, we're gonna just take these, park them down here. And you know, there's our uh, beautiful image right there, but we're gonna get rid of that because we need to go back through and do these processes correctly. So we'll just go ahead, drop the green on there. We'll go ahead and do the correct only. We'll run a run of regular blur exterminator. Then we're gonna get rid of our stars completely. Make sure that we don't need a star image this time. Now we run a run at noise exterminator on this before we stretch it. And we saw last time that we thought that it was a little bit over baked. So I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit to like 0.8. This is an RGB image, so we could try deep SNR. As a matter of fact, why don't we try deep SNR while we're in here? Let's go ahead and back this out and clone that. Go to processes, deep SNR, and this is an RGB image, so this should work for us pretty good. So let's see how deep SNR actually does. I don't really get a lot of RGB data, which I totally wish I had a lot more. So there must have been some kind of filter on here it still didn't do a good job. I'm not 100% sure why. I kind of have this problem with the best SNR. Like it just, depending upon what kind of filter I had or might not have had, it just doesn't like to play nice. So we will go ahead and go back to that original image and we'll just run noise exterminator on it and let's turn it down to like 0.85. Just take the edge off a little bit. There we go, not bad. I like to leave a little bit of that crunch on there. So that's what we're looking at right now. So let's go ahead and let's stretch this baby. We'll turn this off and I am just always just gonna use the statistical stretch. You can feel free to run your stretch however you want to. We can take a look at this right here in the preview mode. Maybe that is a little too strong. Let's see what it looks like at a point two. Well, let's just meet it in the middle at 0.22 and let's go ahead and execute. All right, absolutely loving that. That looks really good. So now let's have a little bit of fun. We're not gonna do any curves boosting or anything at all. What I wanna do is I want to work on this right here that's totally overexposed. Let's play with the fame script. So steady astro, F-A-M-E script. There it is right there. We're gonna make this a little bit bigger and what I want to focus on is I want to work on that core. There's a few different ways that we can do it. We can do it by creating binary masks or lightness masks, whatever you wanna do. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and we're gonna draw us a mask around the core here. And it, we're gonna use the freehand and we're gonna go ahead and just blur the crap out of it so that way we don't have to worry about anything and we'll do a lightness mask. And then pretty much what I'm gonna do is just, we're gonna hold down shift and I'm just gonna start drawing around 
all of this bright area right here. All right, doesn't get any easier than that. We're gonna hit execute and there is our mask that we got. So then we're gonna apply that mask over here and we can go ahead and get the mask out of the way. And then if you go ahead and open up your curves tool and do your real time preview, you don't have to worry about hiding the mask or nothing like that. So this is where things are gonna get really cool. Cause before we had no way besides the game or whatever to try to target that area, you could try to do a color mask or something and it just didn't work. So an idea that started on trying to isolate like a specific color easily has turned into literally one of the most powerful things in Pixinsight that I think that we have right now, because what you can do with this is just amazing. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start dropping down. You can see the contrast changing on there. So I wanna just take the edge off of that and just make that all nice and neat. And then we can see what's going on. So now let's go ahead and remove that mask. And you can see that now we're getting some really awesome detail in there. We've killed that brightness by using that script. And I mean, you know, if it works good once, let's do it again, because we've got all of these awesome sharpening tools that we got in here to play with. So we might as well use this stuff. So let's zoom in in a one-to-one -one and let's find the center of the iris. There it is right there. We'll make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see what is going on. And again, I am gonna do a lightness and a freehand, and we're gonna head and blur this out again a lot, because this time what we wanna do is we wanna target this even more. Like we just wanna get this super bright and some of this structure in here, because there's so much cool structure inside the iris. So there we go. Let's go ahead and run that, execute, Boom, there we go. Now let's bring it over here, drag it and drop it on our image. And we'll go ahead and move that thing out of the way because we don't need it. And let's bring, let's go ahead and hide it this time because we're gonna have to hide it so that way we can see exactly what's going on. Go ahead and look at the preview. And then let's go to our good old time friend, HDR multi-scale transform, which is literally the easiest thing to do, especially when you've got a mask like this. Default is seven. Let's just see what we can do. We're only working on just that little bit right there. So there was a very subtle change, a little bit more of a change. Let's just drop it down. This is one of those that the lower the number is, the more aggressive it is. Look at the detail recovery that we got going on in there. Oh man, it's like, how low can you go, baby? I mean, we can go all the way down if we want to. Let's just go all the way down to one and let's hit this baby and see what it does. Hey, you can only go down to two. That's kind of crap. Still, two looks good. I mean, look what's going on in there. Does it look a little over crunchy at two? Yeah, probably, but who cares? Let's go ahead and back that up and let's just hit that baby with a number four. All right, and there we go. That is what we are looking at right there. Everything looks freaking amazing. Let's go ahead and remove the mask. Again, just look at the hyperstar data here, just how amazing everything looks. I mean, geez, you just can't beat it. Let's go ahead and add our stars back in. So with stars, you can do a couple different things, however you wanna do it. All right, so let's add our stars back in and we'll just go ahead and use the combined images script. I think this is gonna work the best for right now. Typically, I would love to drop this into Affinity Photo and do it that way, but I know a lot of you guys are not into all that yet. And the thing that's great about this now is look how good those stars look and just how great this image looks i mean come on man like what else are what else do you want out of your astro image process besides something like that yeah we definitely overcooked the center of that but that really wasn't the whole point of this demonstration the whole point of this demonstration was to take a look at the hyperstar data and then kind of start playing around with some of the simple scripts that are inside here 
I really love the star glow that I got though. I am all about like stars right now. I'm going to be doing some videos on all the things we can do with our stars. And I mean, again, some of these are definitely, it's a given that they are hyperstar stars, but you know, it kind of is what it is. What we can do to clean this thing up at the very end is we could turn all that stuff off. We can give this thing like one good little pass of blur exterminator, which will give us a little bit more sharpening on some stuff. And once this is done, that's going to do it. I mean, there you go. There is your image. Like again, a little muddy, you know, but two hours and 16 minutes. If you put in another couple hours on this sucker, you are good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little demonstration. Hyperstar has its annoyances, but man, when it comes through, does it really come through? I can't believe looking at this old data, like how amazing it looks. So that is it, guys. Hope you guys appreciate the video and enjoy it and learn some from it. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.